Question 15. PQRS is a trapezium with PQ parallel to SR. P and Q are on the x-axis and the y-coordinate of S is 8. So the y-coordinate of R must, must also be 8 because they're parallel. The area of PQRS is 48 square units and we need to work out the possible set of points for P, Q, R and S. Now, I know that the area of a trapezium, um, I'll just write it down over here. So the area of a trapezium is equal to a half A plus B times by the height. Okay, so this particular trapezium we're being told is 48 square units and we also know the height is going to be 8. So I've got my area which is going to be 48 and that's going to be equal to a half times 8 which is 4. So it's going to be 4 times A plus B. Okay, right. So that means if 48 is equal to 4 times a plus b, a plus b must be equal to 48 divided by 4, which is going to be 12. So that tells me that a plus b is going to be equal to 12. And I'm just going to label, it doesn't matter which way around I do it, I'm just going to label this a and b so we know what we're talking about. So that's a, b, and the height there was the distance between the parallel sides. Okay, right, so... Um, now we need to work out one possible set of points for P, Q, R and S. Um, and we also know over here that P, Q is going to be greater than S, R. Okay, so the length of A is shorter than the length of B. Okay, so I've got my coordinates down here that I can fill in. But I straight away know that the Y coordinate of P and Q has to be zero. Okay, because it's on the x-axis. So that's going to be 0 there, and that's going to be 0 there. I also know the x, sorry, the y-coordinate of s and r is going to be 8. Yeah, they're both, I've gone up 8. Put an 8 in there, and an 8 in there. Okay, and now I'm looking for any two numbers, um, any two lengths here that add up to 12, and I know that B is going to be greater than A. So let's give B a um, length of 8 and A a length of 4. Okay, there's going to be lots of possible answers here. So if I call P 2 and this has a length of 8, then Q must be 10. So I'm going to put a 2 there and a 10 there. So if that was 2, that was 10 that's going to have a length of 8. And I also need this to have a length of 4. Let's just write that in. So we're going to have that as a length of 8 and that as a length of 4. So I've called this 2 and this 10. So that gives me a length of 8 there. And then over here, if I call this 4, then this would have to be 4 more, which is going to be 8. And that seems to work there in a nice pattern so I'm going to put S is 4 and R is 8 there we go and um, that seems to work ok let's move on so that was question 15 question 16 I am thinking of two different numbers. They are both greater than 10. Their highest common factor is half the smaller number. Work out one possible pair of numbers. Okay, so two different numbers. They are both greater than 10. Their highest common factor is half the smaller number. So if I Let's try 10 and 15. The highest common factor of 10 and 15 is going to be 5. And that's half of that number there. So 10 and 15 
seem to work. Okay, part B says A, B and C are prime numbers. Is N always odd? So N is equal to A cubed times B squared times C. And is it always odd? Well, if they're prime numbers, and if I just list down my prime numbers, I've got 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, etc. Okay, so I've got the product of three numbers here. And if any of those three numbers um, is even, then that product is going to be even because an even number times by anything is going to make it an even number. Since one of our prime numbers could be two, that means it is possible for this product to be even. So is n always odd? I'm going to say no. And my reason is um, one of the numbers could be 2 and multiplying by um, an even number will give us an even answer. Okay, so multiplying um, an integer, I should say, by an even number will give us an even answer. Okay, question 17. Here are two closed containers. Four tennis balls just fit in each container and each tennis ball has a diameter of 64 millimeters. Which container has the smaller surface area? So this is going to be 64 because that's one tennis ball diameter this is going to be two tennis ball diameters that's going to be 128 um, and in this direction here we've got two tennis balls again and that's going to be 128 this one over here um, I've got a radius over here that I'm going to mark down because it's a cylinder and that's going to have a radius of a half of 64 which is going to be 32 millimeters and this is going to be four tennis balls and that's going to be a length of 256 and that's four lots of 64 256 millimeters okay I've got all this labeled up now so um, let's have a look uh, so let's do the cuboid first of all so for my cuboid I'm going to have 64 times 128 and that's going to be the front and the back so I'm going to have that face oh, sorry that's going to be the four sides going around it, so 64 times 128 and I've got four faces, this one, this one, the one at the back and the one aside over here um, they're all going to have the same area so I'm going to times that by four and then I've also got, I'm going to add on the top which is going to be 128 times by 128 and the bottom that's also going to be 128 times 128 so we've got 128 times 128 and I've got that twice so I'm going to times that by 2 um, now I don't need brackets here but I'm just going to put them in so it's clear what's going on so I've got those four sides um, front back left and right that's going to give, be given by that calculation there and then I've got the top and the bottom that's going to be given by that calculation there. Okay so here's my calculator I can work that out that's going to be 
64 times 1 to 8 times 4 plus 128 times 128 times 2 and that gives me 65,536 65,536 and it's an area and it's going to be in millimeters squared okay so for the cylinder well um, I've got the area of my circle um, that's going to be on that side and that side so I've got two of those circles so I've got pi r squared or pi times 32 squared um, but I've got two of those so I'm going to times that by two so that bit there is going to tell me the area of my circles and I'm going to add to that um, and the um, this part of the cylinder, the part that's been rolled round, that's going to have a length of 256 and it's going to be, if I rolled it out, it's going to give us a rectangle so it's going to look like this and the height of that rectangle is going to be the circumference of the circle so it's going to be pi times by the diameter which is 64, so it's going to be 64 pi that's going to be the height of that rectangle if I rolled out that cylinder so I'm going to have 256 times by 64 pi okay so using my calculator I've got um, pi times 32 squared times 2 plus so that's that part of it and then we've got this bit here which is going to be 256 times 64 pi and that gives me 57,906 57,906 millimeters squared okay so my question is asking me which container has the smaller surface area is it the cuboid of the cylinder well we can see that the cylinder um, has a smaller surface area so we can say cylinder oops, has smallest or smaller surface area okay